Welcome back to the Swiss campaign abridge where last time the world was dramatically changed when the aliens brainwashed everybody to become fascist and then mysteriously came along and blew everybody who wasn't fascist up. So because of this, a new fascist faction has emerged and taken over most of the world with us formally at the head of this faction. But last time I used some cheats to get out of the faction and now we're in a position where we can declare war on the faction and be at war with everybody. So it's time for a bit of a final showdown for this campaign. We're going to be at war with pretty much everybody and just see how that goes. Can anybody get in to Fortress Switzerland now? So we start the war, slowly the call to wars will go through and all of these other guys who are hanging around will be at war with us as well. But we do have a completely fortified border, so the AI is not going to be that interested in attacking. What they can do, of course, is hit us with planes, and the entire world can put out quite a few planes if they want. We start contesting air superiority, and it goes okay at first. But one thing I wanted to try and do in this challenge is not run out of fuel. So I need to not actually put very many planes into the sky, and with only a few up there, we completely lose our air superiority and we're still losing fuel, so we can't even keep this up for too long. And because the enemy are now bombing things, our territory is going to be full of destroyed buildings, which only makes things worse as stuff like the radars and the anti-aircraft guns go down. Now all we can do is wait, specifically wait for our fortifications to be so damaged that the enemy actually bother to attack us. Well, here we are with that having happened, and we're in big trouble because once the forts are down, we can't really resist the enemy. We're still getting really good stats on these battles. It's just that we're fighting so many battles they can out-organize us, plus the enemy have complete close air support dominance with thousands of bombers. That means our units will just get deleted no matter the results of these battles. Therefore, we are in big trouble, we're either going to die or be forced to retreat by the two methods described above, and Switzerland is going downtown. There's eventually just a capitulation as our front line falls and the entire world piles in. So it looks like we weren't quite as good as our propaganda advertised. However, that's not necessarily the end of the world, although it is going to be the end of this world. We're going to walk away from this situation with Switzerland now cut in half, a bit of it's still there, and we were also forced back in to the Hail God Emperor Devon faction. Well, I suppose in this timeline, the God Emperor will reign supreme, but we're going to go back in time and have the aliens intervene to make things a little bit fairer for us. First, I thought let's do this research all cheat, so we now have every technology that might help in some way. Well, at first it's not actually going to help that much because while we've unlocked all of these new weapons, we can't manufacture them or use them. So with that in mind, I looked up another cheat. You can basically just type in ALE and it will give you a massive pile of all of your best equipment available. So you do that a couple of times and there we go. Now we've got stuff. We're going to have loads of extra jet fighters so we can afford to lose them. We're going to have tons of upgraded infantry equipment and we now have access to a load of anti-aircraft guns, which I can use by adding an anti-aircraft support company to all of my divisions. That's going to make them less killable by close air support, and they might even take out a few enemy planes along the way. So that's that. Now we're totally geared up. Our stats must be a little bit higher or something, but we can go a bit further because all that's not going to make an enormous difference. I'm going to also do a cheat that allows you to instantly construct things. The reason I did this is to fortify even more and also to get those radars to go through. So we're going to have the best radars available in this mod to help out with the air war. Because essentially a war with the world is just going to be an air war since they're unlikely to attack on land until they've made a certain amount of progress in the air. So how long we can hold out is really just influenced by how well our planes can do. The thing is though, we still have the fuel issue and we're going to counter that with just another cheat. You can type fuel and then a number and you just get some fuel. So in this new cannon, the Swiss have mined out the mountains and absolutely filled them 
with fuel. So we have massive, near bottomless fuel reserves that we can magically call upon to restore our tiny fuel reserve on the surface because you're not allowed to build more than two silos due to the game's rules. Therefore, we can now put all of our planes into the sky. So let's see if we can do any better in this version of the Swiss vs Everybody Showdown. One advantage we're going to have results from the use of that instant construction cheat. And it's not actually the instant construction, that's the advantage. It appears to be glitched. I noticed I have more buildings than I have building slots while checking to see if I could build anything. And this let me on to a suspicious trait of this cheat. You might see I have something like six refineries here, and you're normally only allowed to make one. And the reason reveals itself quickly looking at this panel. We also have more land forts than you're allowed, and more entrenchments, and a bigger airbase than you're allowed. That's because the instant construction cheat doesn't properly work with repairs in the construction queue. If something needs to be repaired, it not only repairs it, it duplicates it and goes past the usual rules for how many things you can have. So when we look at things like our fortification levels, you can see we have absolutely loads, and that place in the bottom right corner is going to be getting more and more because it's being bombed right now. So the instant construction cheat just makes another fort every time it finds a damaged fort, and it's now level 700 and climbing. This actually isn't as much of an advantage as you might think because, well firstly there's diminishing returns, so a level 800 fort is about the same as a level like 50 fort, it doesn't add to your stats anymore. Also, once something is really high level, it's extremely susceptible to damage. So a level 800 fort that gets bombed will instantly become a level 50 fort. And then you have this gigantic construction thing or repair thing in your construction queue that takes 1000 years to do if you're not cheating. If you are cheating, the level just goes up. And I did actually turn the cheat off. So we're going to end up having a bunch of endless construction things going on where the queue gets stuck just repairing 300 levels of infrastructure somewhere or something like that. Well, we'll look at that later. I can't remember when I actually turned the cheat off, but at some point we'll go back to being damaged again after I've finished building myself up. In my canon, we're just building mountains over parts of our territory. And another thing we're doing is expanding our air bases with this cheaty glitch. And I like to imagine we've taken the mountains and made some runways like aircraft carriers that come out of the side so we can have endless stores of planes down below that get lifted up and then launched. As a result, I'm putting more planes into the field. We're going to have thousands of fighters available. And as long as I also keep cheating to maintain fuel, we can even use them. I'm doing a ballistic missile attack on nearby Germany. This does basically nothing, these things are very ineffective. And also, that instant construction cheat affects the AI, so if I destroy AI buildings, they will also get the same upgrades as mine, so really I don't want to be doing that. Anyway, a bit later we've got thousands of planes in the air, we're maintaining a vague balance of air superiority, and the enemy have just straight up stopped bombing us, so that's the end of our cheating I guess, because we need them to bomb us for that cheating to work. We've also taken no casualties, confirming that air casualties don't count. A few people were claiming before that they did. It looks like casualties taken among fighters don't count at the very least. It's possible that strategic bombing of airfields can inflict casualties, but I think we did have some of that. Overall, I don't really know. I think the entire air war is just tacked on. It doesn't count. You have unlimited air manpower for all intents and purposes. It's all about just how many planes you can make. And, well, we've got like 30,000 planes in reserve now, thanks to the aliens, so we'll just see how long that lasts us. I actually stopped contesting the air for a while to see if the enemy would come back to bomb us some more. They didn't, so it looks like my dream of being bombed into a more powerful position are over. Well, we can just defeat their fighters, and we're defeating them en masse. The world probably could still outproduce us because they have so much capacity. But they are going to be limited by how many air bases are in range of this theatre and by how much they can be bothered to actually send in planes. Plus, a lot of the lesser nations with less research will only just be getting planes at this stage. We're actually being attacked mostly by biplanes at the moment by the looks of things. So our 4,000 or so fighter jets are just strafing through the valleys, absolutely annihilating hundreds of enemy planes on every mission. It's not going very well for the enemy, but it's also not really going to damage them in the long term. 
here's me making something new. I decided to use all of our techs to put together an armoured division with tanks and self-propelled artillery guns and a bunch of mechanised infantry just to make the stats work. The reason I'm making this is, well, to attack the enemy. You might know that tank divisions are more useful for attacking than defending. And I thought since the enemy will just never attack me because we have a fully set up level 10 and level 10 plus sometimes defensive ring, I'm going to put together some tanks and just do some cheeky raids into the enemy and see if we can prompt something to happen. So we'll wait for these brand new panzer divisions to be trained. We do have 30,000 spare tanks because of the cheating, so we might as well use them for this, I suppose. One thing I'd been doing in the background was coming up with more war justifications because the enemy alliance didn't call in quite a lot of its members. Maybe they think they don't need to. So I have to start these independent wars against various other factions so that this stack of stuff right here is more at war with us. And that stack, by the way, is going to be losing all of its organization standing there because of the classic issue that the AI is not programmed to use the supply system but it still has to, so it will just stand there and die, the classic issue that ruins most Hearts of Iron campaigns, here it is once again. So this means if we want to attack to the south, it's actually going to be quite easy for us because they'll just retreat if we attack with virtually anything. We're also getting more and more planes up to something like 5,000 in the air, we're actually sometimes having air superiority over our territory. That's useful, allows us to nuke people if we can get enough air superiority, and we do have a few nukes in the bag. We maintain our zero casualty score. The enemy are actually taking some casualties, not from the air war, but every now and again they attack for like three frames somewhere and lose a couple of troops, and that keeps happening. So they have been very slowly losing their army. If we waited for an extremely long time, maybe we'd defeat them in that fashion, just the AI glitching out essentially now and again and accidentally starting an attack and then immediately cancelling it. Might be something to do with all of the lag and slowdown I'm getting with so many divisions in the field. Well, it's time for us to do something. I've got my five divisions of tanks ready to go, so I brought them to my southern border and decided to just attack somebody. Here we go. We've got quite a decent stat lineup compared to the enemy, so even in a straight up battle, we might be able to get somewhere with these tanks. They are the most advanced tanks you can get, although because we're in the World War I mod, I don't think they're all that advanced, I don't remember anymore. But anyway, the point is, the enemy had no organization, so after a very short battle where it basically doesn't matter what happens, the enemy will just lose by default. And that's that, we've taken a tile. The issue is, now we're outside of our defensive locations, and not using our defensive divisions either. So I immediately started running away. I didn't want to have to contest this tile against counterattacks. What I wanted was for that attack to just stir the enemy up in some way and perhaps convince them to attack me somewhere else. I think somebody mentioned in a comment on a previous part, they're actually like hard coded to never attack above a certain level of fortification. So I can't trick them into doing it, unfortunately. In the end, I just had to take ownership of that tile and change my frontline positions to include it. It's not going to have the best fortifications, so we will take casualties fighting there, unfortunately, but we're just doing this now. We're going to do something in the game, by the looks of things, pretty incredible. With the tanks, we can just attack somewhere else now and take more territory. I could probably push the enemy all the way back down into Italy if I really wanted, because there are so many armies here with absolutely no organization. And if we just keep attacking them, they'll never get that organization back, especially if they remain grouped together. If I had more tanks, we could just do one division pushes across tons of fronts and make some progress. Although making progress isn't exactly my goal, of course. It should be noted now that the enemy's bombing campaign has actually started again. But I'm not really paying any attention to it because I've got the aerial war display box set to our missions instead of enemy missions. That means I couldn't tell the enemy were bombing me until I checked and saw this massive list of things that's been bombed. So at some point, as mentioned, I turned off the instant construction thing, don't remember when. But we've now got tons of destroyed stuff, and some of it's kind of super destroyed because it was glitchily leveled up and now it's been just as glitchily leveled back down to require tons of repairs to get back into working order. All very inconvenient. We've also lost so much of our airbase capacity from that bombing I can't put my thousands of fighters into the air anymore, we've lost like three quarters of our air fighting capacity. Sucks really, 
well, we need to urgently repair those air bases as soon as possible. I actually went and tried to find out if there was a cheat that allowed to, to just repair things and not use instant construction to avoid that glitchy leveling up. Because I would like to be able to repair things a bit faster than normal, the issue is that if we let the enemy blowers up, we end up back where we were at the start of this part, where yes, they can just level everything and then kill us because they can remove all of our defenders' advantages, or most of them, I should say. So we need to avoid being stuck in a spiral where we're being bombed faster than we can repair it, but I also wanted to avoid just using cheats because it's going to glitch all of our stats through the roof. The ultimate decision and all that was, we're going to glitch all of our stats through the roof, it's time to embrace the true power of our alien overlords. I turned the AI off so that they can't use these cheats for a while while I have them switched on. And then, we're going to do the repair cheat on all of that stuff in the list there, and every time it gets repaired, every in-game day I think it happens, it will also get leveled up. And there's no cap on that leveling. We're going to see just how powerful Switzerland can become, and wait to an arbitrary point, and then turn the AI back on and the cheats off and stuff, and see how things look after that. And as we see there, I'm still finding more oil below the mountains to continually fuel our air war. And the tanks do need a decent amount of fuel when you move them around. I think on my own, with my base fuel production, we can't even have these tank divisions moving and fighting with our fuel not going down. Although at this stage our base fuel production has been affected by the fact our synthetic oil refineries have been cloned downwards into the ground, so we actually make more fuel than usual. And this cheat will help us out with the long-run fuel situation by making more refineries over time, I think anyway, and more silos too. Well, we'll leave this here. We're now going to power up for a bit, and then see what we can do with that power. My goal is still to force the enemy to attack me, and I now know that there is a way to do it. I've played ahead and found out a couple of ways actually to make the enemy attack you. So we are going to be doing some offensive and defensive projects and stirring up the massive hellish end war everything versus Switzerland challenge that I was going for. So it will either be one or two more parts, I can't quite remember how long it took me, I think it took like five more hours to get to the point I am now in the campaign. I can't remember how much of that was actually something interesting, so maybe there'll be one more part, maybe two, maybe three, I don't know. We're going to find out together once I troll through all that footage to make part eight of this series.